I think I'll just work from left to right. And this is only going to be based on what I expect to be uh, how how good I think these decks will do potentially. How good they'll be as a play going into Orlando Regional specifically, not kind of overall in the format, just like meta specific. Um, so some of them might be placed a little bit lower than I would place them on average for like previous tournaments and stuff. And we did just get crowns in the second change of stuff. So ready turn. Uh, as of right now, uh, it feels tier four to me. I don't think it's bad. Um, I don't think it goes into the bad tier. I think I would put it in uh, tier four. Uh, Kiram, I'll put in the bad tier. I'll go right ahead and put Kiram in the bad tier. Kiram's like terrible right now. I don't know. If, I don't know if you beat anything to be honest. <laughs> like it's like no matchup you actually beat. If you play double Drapion, you probably beat Mew. But any deck can do that, so it's not like really that big of a deal. Um, up next is Blissey, which I think I'll also put in tier four. I almost want to put it in bad, but I think it's. A, I would. I think it's a little bit better than Kiram. Uh, I might put it in bad. Can I define the tiers? Um, I, just like how good the decks are, I guess, like overall in as far as like a matchup spread goes, like tier one is going to be the most, uh, some of the most powerful decks that can tech for anything. Um, yeah, so tier one would be the most powerful decks that if they could, they could beat anything through techs. Um, and it really comes down to what they choose to play as to what they can beat on the day. Tier two would be the, the kind of the slot under that where it's like uh, very powerful decks, but they can't quite tech for everything. Um, and beat them like some things you'll have to just take auto losses to uh, and then tier three will be kind of dark decks that are specifically trying to target probably the top tier uh, and kind of lose to everything else around that for the most part i think that's what i would put as tier three um, or just aren't really as powerful or cons as consistent like maybe they're just kind of uh neutrally have decent matchups against most things but they're just not as powerful or consistent as something like and we can kind of set the um like tier one will be Lugia, and then I'm also gonna put Kyogre Lost Box, and then I'll also put the uh, Skystone Lost Box. I think I'll put Ray Lost Box as well in tier one. The only problem I have with Ray Lost Box in general right now is I actually feel like your Mew matchup is unfavorable, but that can just be fixed by adding a Drapion. So I think um, I mean you could category you could put all these together and just call them Lost Box. The only Lost Box deck I'm not going to put up in Tier 1 is Lost Zard. I actually don't think Lost Zard is actually that bad right now. There's just no reason to play it because all of these builds of Lost Box are just better, like, across the board. They have better matchup spread. They have less awkward situations. They have a, a higher power level so they can take over games more easily. Um, so I actually don't, but I don't think actually Lost Zard is that much worse than any of these, but it's worse enough that you'd never play Lost Zard in like pretty much any sh meta shift. So I think Lost Zard is actually only like a tier two, is only like down probably at tier two, to be honest. I don't think it actually falls that far down. Um, maybe it's tier three, but it's definitely not tier four or bad. It's your, either tier two or tier three. It's just there's the reason no one plays it because there's literally no reason to play it. Um, uh, yeah, there's literally no reason to there's no reason to play Lost Art. So I actually don't even think it's that bad. I haven't played it in a while, but even in like the previous tournaments leading up to this one, I never thought it was a terrible play. I just always thought Kyogre was a the better Lost Zone deck. So it's like, why would I ever consider playing Lost Art? But I think I'd put Lost Art at tier two. It's just there's no reason to play it, but it's actually not a terrible deck. Uh control also tier two, uh, because control is a deck that like if people want to beat it, they just kind of beat it. You can just kind of tech for it and you just beat it. So it doesn't have like I feel like control doesn't win the tech war. If you want a tech to beat control, you just beat it. It's hard for control to tech against your techs if you're choosing to bring the techs. So I'm going to put uh, control in tier two. I'll put fusion Mew in tier three because I think it does struggle quite a bit against the Lost Zone decks. Um, but I'll go ahead and move the other Mew into tier two. And specifically, I think Mew might be a tier one deck on average in this format. But going into Orlando specifically, Sky Sealstone has been pretty hype. A lot of people are liking it. Um, and I think because Leon did just win with the Path Mew, I think there might be a little bit of Drapion hype. Not enough to the point where I don't think Mew is in a fine play. Like, if you've been grinding Mew the last two weeks and plan to bring it to Orlando, I would say you should probably just bring Mew. Because I think even with those factors, I don't think Mew's still a terrible play. It's hard to it's hard for Mew to ever be a terrible play, to be honest. I think the, the worst time it was ever a play was at Arlington Regionals, and there was just such a ridiculous amount of Drapion. I think going into that format... That was bad. Uh, <laughs> that was really bad. That was a really bad time to play Mew. But like right now, I actually think uh, Mew is actually not in like a truly terrible spot. I think Mew is like okay. I'm definitely not going to see the rise in Drapion numbers that we saw at Arlington. I don't think like ever again. Uh, let's see. Weezing. 
Uh, so it's like quad wheezing. I actually think quad wheezing is kind of decent because it does beat. I'll probably put it in tier three. It beats like all the, it like can beat all the Lost Zone decks and you auto win Lugia uh, if they don't have canceling Cologne. Like you just, auto, the Lugia matchup is so free. If Now with canceling Cologne though, things are a little bit more awkward uh, and the matchup is definitely a little bit more difficult because if they eventually draw into their canceling Cologne, they get access to their Archaeops. And if they haven't lost too much energy or are not too far behind on the prize exchange, they do just win. So we seen used to be an auto win against Lugia. Now that everyone has canceling Cologne, uh, it becomes, do they have that? And your loss on matchups are like pretty solid overall. Uh, you're not actually as favored as you'd maybe think, but with people cutting Snorlax, the matchups definitely got better for Weezing. Cause like the main attacker that the loss on decks would set up to actually KO Weezing would be Snorlax. But now they have stuff like Raikou V, which is pretty good at doing that as well. So it depends on the build, but I'm gonna put Weezing at tier three, quad Weezing. Eternal Weezing, I think I'm gonna put as, I almost want to put it as bad. I actually think this deck is really bad. <laughs> I think Eater Weezing is really bad because I think you're unfavored against Lugia. And any matchup that's not at least pulling a 50 50 against Lugia, I don't see why you would ever ever play it, which makes me un a little sus about Blissey because I don't know if Blissey's pulling a 50 50 against Lugia. It's probably not. The Rat Eternal decks try to. So I think if you can't pull a 50 50 against Lugia, I think you are just considered a bad deck. You should probably just be put in bad, to be honest. Especially if you're not dominating the rest of the. Um, Especially if you're not dominating the rest of the format, to be honest. Um, all right. Palkia Intellion. I actually kind of like this deck. I don't know if I'd give it tier two status, but I actually think the deck is pretty solid overall, especially with people starting to cut Bird Keeper. So I'm going to go ahead and call Palkia Intellion being a tier two deck going into... Your your loss on matchups are like the tough things, though. Does you, do you ever actually have a decent enough loss on matchup where you Palkia actually makes sense to play? You definitely need to do some Ice Q strats. Uh, I mean, if you can get the Ice Q set up... If you get the Ice Q set up and can go down to Lone Ice Q, I guess you can just win, right? If you can get to Lone Ice Q, I guess you're in a fine spot. Getting to Lone Ice Q is kind of the problem, though, for Palka Inteleon. Um, Raikou, Skystone with Body Palkia. But, but that's not your win condition as Palkia against Lost One Dex. Your win condition is Lone Lone Ice Q. I think your win condition is definitely Lone Ice Q. Your win condition isn't... Um, your win condition isn't Attack with Palkia. So I think you have, I think it's possible that Palkia is like fine right now. I would have to like play more of the deck against the Lost Zone decks. I think your Lugia matchup is getting pretty good because I think people are cutting Bird Keeper, which is great for Palkia and Teleon because that's the win condition is like the Articuno in that matchup. So I'm going to put Palkia and Teleon as a, uh, as tier two for now. It's not a deck that I have too much input on or yeah, info on because I don't play it a whole ton, but uh, Reggie's Gudra is pretty popular right now, but I, it's just like one bad matchup for Reggie's. So I, I'm going to put Reggie's at tier two. I think with how hype Lost Zone is right now, you just want to go with a heavier Marnie account, maybe even up to four as well. Um, yeah, heavy Marnie account in the Reggie's right now. Arceus Box, I'm gonna put it at tier three. I think that this deck is super gimmicky, uh, and if you get, if you, if you like, I don't know if you gimmick enough, I guess you get there. But not a huge fan of the deck. Uh, Articuno and Telian, I'm gonna put it at tier three. It has this kind of the same wish and win condition as Palkia up against Luka, and people are cutting Bird Keepers. Um, but I feel like the deck is really fragile against. Um, I don't know, stuff like Gudra, stuff like, uh, I mean, Gudra's like the main one, I guess I'm that I'm kind of thinking of. The deck's super fragile against Gudra. Your Mew matchup's pretty good because you have double Drapion. Uh, your Lugia matchup is getting better because people are cutting Bird Keeper, but some people still have the Bird Keepers. Your Lost Zone matchup, I guess, is about the same as the Palkia deck. You just try and get down to lone, uh, SQ, but you have less options because you can't be like aggressive with, uh, your Greninja uses or just being aggressive with Palkia. So I feel like your matchup against the Articuno and Teleon matchup against Lost Zone Dex is definitely worse than Palkia's because you still have the same win condition of getting to lone SQ, but Palkia can also be like, nah, I'm just going to start swimming with Palkia this game because you're drawing awkward or weird, or I'm going to turn to use Greninja to KO double Comfy and get ahead that way first, um, and then go into other stuff later. So I'm going to give, uh, I'll give Palkia tier two, but I think I'll give Articuno tier three. That would be like one thing I'd have to like a Tesla a lot more with those decks as well. So I'm not too experienced with the decks, but so how like consistent can you get down to the lone SQ? I think is like a big question, obviously, but I'm actually not sure. Um, one thing interesting with SQ in both of these decks now though, is you can do it a little bit differently because no loss zone decks, almost no loss zone decks are now play vacuum. So instead of having to go, so you can get like parasol involved and be less concerned with the wash energy. You can do stuff like uh, Raihan, to SQ, grab Twin, you know, Inteleon, get Parasol, scoop of net everything. And you can do it in one turn now with a Parasol. Um, and you don't have to 
rely on leaving SQ in play for a turn and have it let it get bossed or something like that. Um, <clears throat> a lot of Lost Zone boxes are playing Sinnoh. Zero Lost, Bo Lost Zone decks are playing Sinnoh right now. There's zero, there's zero Sinnohs in any Lost box right now. No one is playing Sinnoh. It's just not a thing. No one, no one's, uh, no one's doing it at all. Unless Palkia finds a wash. Yeah, but finding wash isn't hard though because you have double Raihan. You just like Raihan it out. Um, you just Raihan it out and then you just uh, tackle it that way. All right, loss on Guja, tier two. I think that deck's pretty solid actually overall. It's not, uh, definitely not, I don't think it's, I th it feels like, uh, like I said, like Mew feels pretty close to tier one. Control feels pretty close to tier one. I could see Reggie's feeling pretty close to tier one. Guja does not feel like it can ever be a tier one deck though, but I think it's solidly tier two. Uh, Arceus Pikachu. Uh, this might be a tier four deck. Where do we ever put this? It, the Lugia matchup is just so bad now that everyone plays Dunsparce. I think we just put it in tier four. Mika Vault, uh, tier two as well. I would actually be maybe willing to throw Vika Vault up at tier one. Um, but a lot of the Lugias have Canceling Clone now. So when you Aerodactyl, it's not a guaranteed win when you go first, like it kind of felt like before. But your Lost Zone matchups are pretty solid. And, um,. The Guja matchup, I guess, is a new matchup that's coming up that is not great, to be honest, for Vika Vault. But I don't know how popular Guja is actually going to be. My current prediction for Guja is going to be 5%. Uh, yeah, my current prediction for Guja will be 5% going into the going into Orlando this weekend. Um, but I, it's been pretty big in online tournaments, but I don't know if that's gonna, actually going to carry over to... I don't know if that's actually going to carry over to IRL tournaments. That might just be in, like, an online tournament thing where it's been going up to, like, 10% online tournaments. I think it'll maybe still hold up around 5 Because we, we see that all in online tournaments, even, like... I mean, the new hype deck is always going to be overplayed, and we see that a lot with Lost Zone actually in general. Like Lost Zone, Lost Box decks is where it'll be, they'll be like sometimes the most popular deck or rivaling Lugia for the number one deck in the tournament. But then when we get to IRL tournaments, Lugia is thirty percent, and Lost Zone decks combined are about twelve percent. Um, or I guess like they were pretty popular at San Diego to be honest. And we don't have the Liverpool numbers, but yeah, I'm gonna give Vika Vault tier two. Durant, uh, probably a tier four deck. <laughs> I don't think it's actually in bad though. I'd rather play Durant than Blissey. Eastern Weezing or Kiram. Uh, Zoro Box, also in Tier 4. You cannot hang with Lost Zone decks at all. You just get absolutely destroyed. I don't know if the deck even has a win condition against Gudra, to be honest. Uh, and Vika Vault's probably also pretty tough. Yeah, I love Zoro Box. Not good enough. Dialga, I think I'd also put it in Tier 4. Nah, you can't. Lugia matchup's too tough. You're probably going to bad. Lost Zone Tina, I'll put it Tier 4. Because I don't think your Lugia matchup is truly awful. But your Lost Box matchup, you can't beat any of the Tier 1 decks consistently, to be honest. Um, yeah, maybe it is just bad. Arceus Dura. Uh, Arc Dura is in a little bit of a weird spot because of the Lugia's adding the Canceling Clone and the Skylas and the Iridas and stuff. That makes things pretty awkward for Arceus Duraladon. So I want to say it's... I, I Before, I would have put it in Tier 2, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. I'm a, a big Arc Dura hater. I would have before put it before put it in Tier 2. But I think it probably falls to Tier 3 because of how much Canceling Clone's in the Lugia decks now. It doesn't make it quite an auto loss, but it makes it a lot harder for Arctura. Because now, even when you go for that turn two boss play or turn three boss play, KO and Archeops as Arceus Duraludon, you can't... Uh, that doesn't stop them from getting a one-hit KO next turn. Because then the Lugia player can just go Choice Belt, Canceling Clone, one-hit KO your Duraludon with Lugia instead while they set up the Evital. So, yeah, I want to... Also, yeah, also Sky Seal Stone. Maybe Arctura is just bad now. Maybe Arctura should be tier four. Like, the more I think about it, Sky Seal Stone can be tough for Arctura. Lugia is getting harder for Arctura. And as, as Crown Zetus was coming out, I actually didn't think Arctura was a terrible deck, to be honest. But um, it is getting worse for it. Um, it is getting a lot tougher for Arctura. I'll put it in tier four, I think. And the last one was Zorark. Probably just put it in bad. I don't see how you beat anything consistently ever. With uh, Sugan Zark. I wish you did. The deck's pretty cool, but yeah. This is my tier list heading into Orlando Regionals. Uh, even though I put... The, the one thing I just want to make sure I reiterate, even though I put Lost Zone Zard here in tier two, you should never play it over any of the other Lost Zone variants. It's like a, a, solidly a step under them. It's just still not terrible because Lost Zone boxes are so good. Uh, yeah, Lost Zone Zard is, a, is solidly a step under the other Lost Zone decks. So you should never play it over the other Lost Zone decks. Lost on boxes, I guess, are just so good that it's still like a tier two deck overall, I think. Yeah.